What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. On one of the previous videos I said I was having some issues with my old Bobcat 185, so today we're gonna try and take care of those issues. Right, guys so this is my 2003 Bobcat 185 uh, pretty good been a pretty good machine for me I've had it for going on seven or eight years now uh, it's the first piece of equipment I've ever bought and it's still the most frequently used piece of equipment I have this thing plays a pretty major role in just about all my projects uh, all my machines are nice to have but if there was one I couldn't ever live without again, it's a Bobcat. I'll never ever not have a Bobcat the rest of my life. They are hands down the most versatile tool I've ever had. I could do without a Bulldog sometimes though. When I say a Bobcat, I'm just speaking about a skid steer in general. Um, Bobcat's kind of like a Kleenex and tissue kind of thing going. I'm just talking about a skid steer. So. I would love to get a dedicated track machine with rubber tracks on it. They are a lot better for grading and dirt work in general. Uh, these do have specific advantages, but this video isn't about that. I've discussed those in previous videos. Um, there's a few things I want to get taken care of today on this machine, and hopefully we can do that. So here we are inside the cab of the machine. I hope, hope the camera focus is good enough for you guys to be able to see. So my machine does not have a... Uh, an ignition key like you have for your car you stick it in and turn it this one is all keypad which some people like some people don't I, I'm pretty partial to it I like that I can change the passcode on the fly and keep people out of it or have limited operations on certain numbers for people it's a pretty handy system okay so I just popped up with a code there and I forget what you got to do hold for codes so we got a 2103 code there I, I don't know if you guys can see that and I'm pretty sure I know what that is because now that I come into the after I pass the passcode screen there you can see this little light down here flashing that is a picture of a glow plug and it's flashing and I do believe that that means the glow plug relay is not functioning and that would also make sense because when I'm starting it now that the weather's getting colder uh, whenever I go to start it it cranks for a little bit longer than it normally would so i'm pretty sure the glow plug relay is down here under this cover but uh we are gonna refer to the manual 
before I go digging into any of that, I'm going to confirm that that's what that code is. And if it is, we're going to confirm that that's where the glow plug relay is at. I've heard stories before of the connectors just coming out of the back of the relays inside of here. So that's hopefully what it is, because I actually had this problem intermittently last year. And intermittent problems are the worst to troubleshoot. So I just kind of let it go because it got me by. But this year it's uh, not going away. So we're going to take care of it before the weather gets cold. So the machine's ready to start right now, and that will show us the next issue I have with the machine. So we'll go ahead and hit the start button. And immediately the machine tries to start moving on me. You can see the handle shaking a little bit. That's because the handle, the park brake is engaged, yet the drive is trying to pull us backwards. So there's issues here with the steering controls. And you maybe you saw that when I just took the machine off the trailer, I was kind of bouncing around back and forth. That's not me. It was extremely hard to get this thing down off of there in a straight line because the controls are kind of jumping around on me. So I have an idea what could be wrong there. Uh, I have fixed that issue once before on this machine. So we're going to dig into that after we look at the relay situation. Hopefully it's just an adjustment that we can do to these controls to get it back to centered neutral. Uh, if not, we might have to mortar some parts. So there we are, the park breaks off right now. I'm not touching anything, but we're just moving all by ourselves. So that's not good. You don't want that. So back in the garage here, I dug out the manual for this machine, and now we've got to dig through here and try and find the service codes, wherever those might be. Here, service codes. After about 20 minutes of looking through the stinking book, bouncing back and forth between about six different indexes, I finally found our code. There's 2103, and I was correct, glow plugs error off. So now we've got to figure out where in these pages it shows where the glow plug solenoid is because I'm pretty sure that's our issue. So I believe I found it and again I believe I was correct. And it looks like F over here is our glow plugs and that is indeed in the box below the seat. So let's go check that out. Now I may not have to do this to fix our glow plug issue but I'm going to have to have this cab flipped up to fix our steering issue for sure. So we'll just go ahead and flip it up now. Maybe. As I said earlier, I've owned this machine for going on seven or eight years. And I have never had this cover off of here. Ooh, wow. Yeah, see how rusty it is? That's good. They're nice enough to give us a little diagram on the inside. So, helpful. Let me get an airline and blow out this rust out of here because that can't be good for anything. Yeah, look at that. The whole thing actually comes out of here, which I, I kind of like that feature. Easy access to the back side because you can't get to it from this side. Uh, maybe, maybe I can get it out of here. Uh, the wiring harness is kind of holding it, but it's not terrible. Anyway, I can reach around on the back side here and feel the back of this fuse relay. It seems like it's pretty well seated in there. Ah, but look at that. Look at how nasty those contacts are. Made in Canada derp. You guys see how corroded those are? So, I'm going to pull one of these other relays here and see if we can swap a couple. See if that takes care of our issue. Might just be dirty contacts or this relay may be bad. 
After looking at this chart here too, I see that the uh, front headlights are on here. Um, I've had intermittent troubles with those too. So I'm kind of wondering if we just had moisture in here and kind of corrode up a bunch of these terminals. So we're going to head and pull those, clean them all up, and see what we can figure out. I'm betting all these relays are probably the same. So we should be able to switch, switch them around see if that solves our issues. Same exact relay as I'm thinking they all are. Yes, so this one here is the same too. So we can't screw these up so far. Yeah, there's a lot of corrosion on some of these. We're going to go ahead and pull them all out of here, I think. Clean up all the contacts. And then we're going to go ahead and put some uh, dielectric grease on the contacts and stick them all back in here and see what happens. All right, I got all of these relays here. Terminals cleaned up and dielectric greased. So in no particular order, I'm going to stick them back in here. And we'll go ahead and try it and see what kind of issues come up. Because if we have a bad relay, I've probably just moved it somewhere else, so that might carry our issue with it. That's not a hole, stupid. I did find one fuse over here that was melted down. I gotta toss a new one in. But it was for the attachment, for the auxiliary attachment. And I don't ever use that anyway, so that's probably why I've never noticed it was blown. All right, moment of truth here. I don't see a, uh, I don't see a light come on for the glow plugs, so that's a good sign. I got no codes showing up over here. Cool. It seems as though we've taken care of our glow plug issue just by cleaning up those relays and stuff there. I'm gonna go ahead and slap the cover back on. We still have our headlight issue. But I'm not too concerned about that at the moment. I don't have time to mess with it. And I really don't use the headlights too often. But it is nice to have them. It's nice to just get in a machine that everything works on. That, that's something kind of rare for me. <laughs> There's always something broken. Now we can move on to our steering issues. So here we are starting to troubleshoot on our steering issue here, or drive control issue, whatever you want to call these. Uh, you know, each side controls each side of the machine. So this lever forward and backward here controls this side of the tracks forward and backward. You push them both forward, the whole machine goes forward. You push them both backwards, the whole machine goes backwards. You know, and vice versa. It's pretty self-explanatory. So, I said I've repaired this before, and I have, um, but I have no formal training at the time. I didn't even have a service manual. So what basically what I did is I just kind of look at things and think about how they should be designed or would be designed or if they should have slop in them. Like the very first thing I'm noticing here when I'm looking at this, so this lever goes down, connects to a rod right here that there you go, connects to this rod right here, which pushes and pulls this whole big rod running across the machine here, running into that plate up there. So when you pull this lever forward and backward, seems to me there's a pretty good amount of play in that versus the other side that doesn't have a whole lot. Now that play is in multiple places. It looks like some of the play is in this whole plate here. The plate as a whole is wobbling back and forth. And it also looks like these arms here that are on top of this drive pump it looks like they have some slop in them as well and I also see signs that there has been hydraulic oil leaking under here pretty good it is uh, very greasy very dirty but it's also almost cleaned off in places like uh, hot hydraulic oil has been flowing over it and that'll actually remove grease so I would love to steam clean this whole thing off and check it out thoroughly but unfortunately my steam cleaner is out of the farm 
And I'm trying to get this thing fixed here today, or at least get parts ordered. And then I could steam clean it before I put it back together if I have to order parts, which I'm pretty sure I will. Also, all this grease did not come from those drive pumps. I've also had some hydraulic lines blow inside here, and which just pretty much sprays every square inch of this inside here with hydraulic oil. And you know, they're field fixes, so you don't have time to clean everything off before you put it back together. You're just trying to hurry up and get it back up and running to finish the job off. So what I did last time to fix this is remove this top plate here. And there are cam follower bushings down here, which is what that shiny thing is in front of my finger. And what it is is they wear out and get slop in them. So it's looking like we might have to do that repair again. And that was not that long ago, but I'm trying to remember if I replaced all of them or just half of them. So the way this system is designed up underneath that that plate with the cam follower bearings, you'll see it better in a minute when I disassemble it, but uh, it kind of creates a center detent to keep both levers at the same pace. And if you keep both levers at the same pace right now, the drives are not even, it'll pull to the, it'll pull to the left. So pretty sure we lost a cam follower bearing in there or bushings going bad somewhere else. Let's get that plate off of there and uh, see what's up. So this is an incredibly tight area to work in. Uh, I'm gonna try to keep you guys in the frame, but uh, it's tough. Anyway, all you have to do to remove this plate is remove this bolt here that is tensioned with a spring. Uh, unfortunately, we can't get an impact or anything on it. There we go. There's our nut. Remove this carefully so we don't drop anything. And then put the nut back on so that it can't come apart. And there you go. Now this plate, if memory serves, should just slide over this direction. Yep. Don't wiggle up off of here. Okay, now that I'm in here, I do remember I replaced all of these cam follower bearings, which is what these are right here. And they still seem pretty tight uh, on both sides here. So there's two more well, over here. They still seem pretty good. They're rolling smooth. Now what I am noticing in here that I think is a lot of our issue is if you look at this side, I wiggle this thing up and down. It's tight. It's clamped. This piece here is clamped onto this square shaft coming up out of the pump, and that's adjusted by that bolt there. It's clamped down nice and tight, but if we look over there at that side, got a lot of slop in that. That thing's moving around quite a bit, and that could definitely uh, be the slop that we have in our drive. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can't tighten that bolt up. Hopefully we can get it to clamp back down there. The real problem with this is that there's not a whole lot of room to get in here put any leverage on it oh okay we did get it some some turn out of it though so that's a good sign hopefully we can get a couple more and be fixed right up here oh yeah my other fear is that we just strip out this piece because I believe it's cast aluminum but say a little prayer that that doesn't happen Whoa. that's pretty tight yeah look at that she tightened up nice for us maybe put another little turn on it call that good yeah I think we're good there I'm going to go ahead and put a drop of uh, oil on the, all these cam follower bearings and then we'll be good to get put our plate back on. So in order to adjust this thing for neutral, 
it really helps for me anyways to understand how this thing works and it's kind of a little bit to wrap your head around especially probably on camera so this is the plate that goes over top of these cam rollers now i have it upside down so you can see what i'm talking about here there's these two uh two plates here that are adjustable and what they do is they ride up against the cam followers and they keep both sides here because this is your left drive and this is your right drive on this side and they both have the same exact setup as what you're looking at here it's just harder to show that one on camera anywho so this plate i don't know what you'd call this maybe a swash plate or something this plate spring loaded so it always wants to return over to this side and that's centered and that should keep both drives in the neutral position So if you have, say this drive over here is wanting to creep and the other side is fine, you've got to adjust this block in here. You've got to loosen these bolts and adjust this block so that this side also remains in center while that side is, if that makes sense there. Uh, it's a pain in the butt, I'm not gonna lie. I think that this system probably could be simplified by a better engineer than me, but it just kind of seems overly complicated, but maybe it's not. Uh, anyway, it helps a lot to lift the machine up off the ground so you don't have to worry about it taking off on you while you're up underneath here trying to work on it. But the only way to really center this thing and do this correctly is, in my opinion anyway, is for the machine to be running so that you can see if you're moving the wheels or not. Now in our case today, just tightening up that uh, this arm on top of the drive control might have done a good bit for us as far as getting this thing back to neutral because it was in neutral previous to that uh, coming loose I do believe so that alone might have fixed this up but I'm gonna go ahead and put the plate back together correctly and uh, go ahead and get the machine up off the ground and we will make sure that it is indeed in neutral now you just gotta crank this thing back down I also noticed the uh, seat cushion here falling apart a little bit on me, so I pulled it off to look underneath of it and see if I could restaple it. But uh, look at the plastic, man. It's just completely disintegrated, broken about 20 different places. So I think we're going to have to order a new one of those, but it'll still hold me up off of that metal for now. Still not getting the, uh, the glow plug sign, so that's a good... I'm good indicator I'm thinking we actually got that fixed so be careful when you start this now since you just messed with all these adjustments there's a good chance well not a good chance but there is a chance that uh, you know something could be way out of whack and this thing could behave real erratic so just be prepared for that make sure your park brakes on so it can't take off until you're ready and we'll go ahead and start it up and see if it's whining right on the startup whoa what's that Fourteen oh three. Not sure what code that is. It does not like something here. Yeah, we got that fourteen oh three again. Let's uh let's check and see what that is. Well, if it ain't one thing, it's another. I just pulled that code and it says that it's a fuel solenoid error. So I'm thinking one of these relays in this box is in fact bad or just has that bad of connections on it. And we have transferred it to the fuel solenoid. Which one is the fuel solenoid here? So that is this guy right here. We'll go ahead and swap that. Swap that back to the glow plugs and see if that brings our glow plug error back. If that's the case, then we'll have to get a new one of these. All right, so after moving some more relays around, I did get the traction control working again, so I've got to pick up a couple relays. But this is how I go about adjusting neutral on here. And uh, I'm sure a lot of you are going to say that this is dangerous, but 
I don't know. I don't think it's that bad. So I've got the back end of the machine supported here and obviously the front's just jacked up with the bucket. We'll go ahead and lift the cab and climb under there and while it's running, we can uh, adjust for neutral. It's, it's definitely an improvement over what it was before, but we still got some drifting going on, so we need to get that squared away. But this side's beautiful. It's not even trying. All right, we're about to climb underneath here. I have no idea if you're gonna be able to hear me once we're underneath there. But basically what we're gonna do is uh, loosen up those adjustments on top of that swash plate or whatever you call that thing. And we're gonna tap them around with a hammer until we get that thing uh, to where nothing's moving. So let's get to it. Okay, with a lot of off-camera cursing and tapping with a hammer and tightening and loosening and adjusting and adjusting, finally got both sides sitting here, not trying to move on me. So that's good. Now we just have to uh, make sure all our adjusters are tight. And what I did, I also loosened up the rods that run back to those control arms so that the handles weren't playing into effect at all. I was simply adjusting just that uh, bracket on top there. So I gotta tighten that all back up and we should be good. Well, I got it all buttoned back up here. Let's fire it up and see if we got the issues resolved here. Alright, as I said the other day, I found my seat pan was pretty well destroyed, so I uh, called the dealership up yesterday and told them I needed one, so they said, oh, we'll order it, it's going to probably take a week. Today, they called me and said it's in. No, I'm not a big fan of that dealer, but it's hard to argue with that turnaround time. So let's get that installed and uh, put a new relay on it, button our box cover up, 
and I believe she's going to be ready to go back into the field. Yeah, yeah, that looks better. Looks like he got his stick these springs on the new guy. Well now, that was a little dirty in there. So you put these hairpins across the uh, holes in the bottom here. That holds the seat on. Okay, last thing I gotta do. I went out and bought a new relay here for the fuse box, so I had a couple bad ones in there. Uh, they didn't have two, they ordered me another one, so when the other one comes in I'll have to toss it in over here. This is for the headlights and that should hopefully fix that up. Uh, the reason everything was so corroded in here is this, this cover had a pinhole rusted through it and I didn't see it, so uh, that was up before, so that was letting the water get in there and hold it in there, so I'm just going to put it on upside down and now it's a drain hole. See? Look at that. Gotta be smart, people. Yeah. Oh, yeah, baby, we are in business. All right, with the uh, new relay in there, let's see if I can't show you how the glow plugs are supposed to work. No. But the light's out over here. glow plugs light staying out but uh, if it's cold enough for the glow plugs to work I don't know what the temperature threshold is probably 40 degrees 50 degrees something like that the screen will count down over here how long it's running the glow plugs if it's really cold I've seen it go as long as 45 seconds for the glow plugs and it'll just say glow 45 and then count down to uh, zero and then you start it so appears that everything's working now though glad to see that we can get back to work. I know one thing, this new seat is super comfortable. I didn't realize how bad the other one was. This is exciting. Down in the comments below, drop a comment if you want to see me make a video that's uh, all about purchasing a used skid steer. Uh, I've done a video sort of like that for bulldozers and excavators, so it's kind of like a general what to look for and uh, anything that's machine specific for skid steers you want to pay attention to. So uh, if you want to see one of those, drop it down in the comments. Maybe I'll do one of those next. Uh, Meepaw. Where'd you go, Baba? All right, well, that should about finish it up, guys. Uh, I'd like to get this thing painted one of these days. It deserves a better paint job than it's got, but, you know, time is money, and I never seem to find the time for uh, cosmetics. But uh, anyway, that should get it cleaned up for now. I do want to definitely get it bathed here soon, running it through the woods and doing all that bush hogging that I was doing during the summer, really just smeared grease everywhere, so it's a mess, but uh, that's rust preventative. There's a few other issues that need to get worked out on it, but uh, that's all I'm going to worry about for right now. Winter time, I'm going to take off that cylinder and a couple other ones and uh, repack those. And I think these lower bushings on these cylinders also need redone. So, always something. But if you like the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. Later.